What, we some kind of suicide squad? I am Iron Man. You are a toy! I live my life a quarter mile at a time. Server Anakin! I have the high ground! I'm gonna steal the Declaration of Independence. I'm simply saying that life, uh, finds a way. Welcome back to the Big Movie Boys podcast, the only podcast that missed the playoffs for 17 consecutive seasons. I'm your host, Jeremy Baum, and with me as always is Ben, six months of winter, Stitch. Go Bills! And Bob, Beef on Weck, Liebel. The Big Movie Boys make me wanna... Shout! <laughs> <laughs> We've got a lot to talk about this week, much of which will be about the city of good neighbors in the form of movies shot in Buffalo, movies that take place in Buffalo, and our review of the movie, Buffaloed. But first, a new challenger approaches the streaming wars, and this one has large tail feathers. Bob, what is Peacock TV? Um, to be completely honest, I don't really know. <laughs> I have no idea. Uh, this is the first I'm hearing about it. So, To be fair, even though you clearly didn't do the homework this week, I don't know that many people know what Peacock is. Even I, trying to be in the know as much as I am, didn't even know it was coming out this week until just a few days ago. But I knew it was coming out. I'm pretty sure you knew it was coming out eventually. Did you know? Yeah, it was I had no idea it was coming out in now. general. Yeah, I had no idea it was coming out this week. They did a horrible job. Like, I feel like HBO Max still like don't really know what that's like going on there. But at least they did a good job of like telling people it was coming out. Like you knew it was coming out at the end of May. The, Peacock, you didn't know when it was coming out. I do remember the trailer. Now, for now, it's kind of coming back to me. I do remember the trailers, and I was intrigued. Do you remember when they just had like? The egg hatching? Did you see those? I think I saw that. Maybe. It, that, that, it's all it was. It's just like an egg hatching and like the NBC logo and it said like coming soon. But it like didn't even build up to this week. No. Like it should have been huge like last week and all this week. Like I said, I didn't even know until Jeremy exactly, just told me right yeah. now. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I knew it was coming out. Um, in my, I made a streaming wars video in like November or December of last year and I mentioned Peacock. And I, my prediction was that it was going to be dead on arrival. I had no expectations for it. I will eat those words. I was actually shockingly impressed. Granted, it's pretty early to tell, but I was impressed by the app itself and also their approach on the release. It's currently in this weird free trial period, which I still don't completely understand, but you can access it just by signing up for an account. You don't need a credit card or anything. That's genius. And you have access to the majority of their catalog right now. Not everything. There is stuff that's hidden behind the subscription wall, but you can access most of it. I think that's the best way to get people to come in. Like, we signed up for Quibi, with which we all said we hated, but, like, we had to give our credit card information and then cancel it. Bob, I hope you did that. I did, I did. And, but, like, this, you just have to sign up, don't have to put the credit card information in. So, like, it gives you the option, once stuff becomes, like, it, once they start charging you, then you have the option. I think that's way better. Get people, like, actually intrigued in your service before you start just mandatory billing them and how big of a pain in the ass is it to have to log one keep track of when your free trial ends and then go in and cancel yeah you know like how nice is this that you can just don't even have to fucking worry about it i I do think considering how saturated the streaming market is and continues to be that this is probably the best approach to trying to get new people clearly whatever quibi did didn't work so they clearly learned from quibi's mistakes there and it's not like they don't have a big um what's the word like an established audience already? N- not even that. Just like, like they have a good like catalog. A library. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Catalog, like their catalog. library is like pretty filled up. And people are going to, once Netflix and like Parks and Rec are off Netflix, I feel like that's going to get a stream of Those new customers. Those two can probably keep this afloat. I feel like alone. that's going to make me eventually have to just download it for a month or something when there's it starts an, there's costing enough money. people that would be wanting to watch those two shows alone and there's even more like I, like like they, yeah like you said their library is good enough that like friends too like just those three yeah. shows will like if it's all friends exclusive. is uh warner brothers that's on hbo max oh, okay okay wasn't that on nbc though but it's uh the show itself is owned by oh, warner brothers interesting. Well, NBC warner media well it just i think they have yeah they have enough shows that will like like if they, they're not on any other streaming services which i think the way we're going to go in the future every single company is going to have their own streaming yeah. service and then like yeah. and then it's going to be like cable where you, you just partner just up with people. Yeah. yeah again but but it's going to eventually like you're going to have to get these like if you're a fan of the office and it's only on this or you're a fan of parks and rec and it's only on peacock that's why i'm you're hoping, gonna get it right because i will eventually do that yeah. that's why i'm hoping they start coming out with like original content that's good too which is kind of hard though because the like nbc will be like well we want that on nbc Actually, then yeah. we don't want it just on our streaming service but that's like the one thing i don't like about this like they don't have the 
the great new shows that everyone are going to be watching. Right. I, I do think that Parks and Rec and especially The Office are juggernauts, especially on streaming services that are really catered to like bingeable content. Yeah. I mean, those two, I agree, alone could probably convince a lot of people to at least sign up for the service if not yeah. actually pay for it. Um, Especially if it's at a good price. I don't even know what the price is. Do you, Jerry? I, d- I don't off the top of my head. You I know what look it's probably going to be? It's going to be like a five ninety nine with ads and a nine ninety nine without ads. Yeah, Jeremy loves that that uh, type of. Play, I don't yeah. see this being a non ad. Like, there's probably an option to upgrade. Wouldn't it be great ads? though if they kept it free and that was the ad version, like how it is right now? Like, just keep free it free and ad supported and give like us YouTube? the ads. Yeah, and make it longer. Give me longer ads if you really need to. That's that's interesting, and you know what? I'm 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 curious to see what they end up doing, like what their tiers are going to be, because almost all streaming services have those now. And with the free uh, trial without putting in the credit card information, that's almost like a good step in the right direction. Like maybe they will have something like you just said. How just nice keep that it be? like that? Like I would stay signed up. I because right now, because why not? Yeah, I you don't. don't have to I pay. don't see myself signing up for this in the near future. Maybe when I'm like. A year from now, when I'm like, oh, I'd like to watch The Office again, but right now I'm not signing. But up say for this. you're not paying at all, like you just said, you're not paying at all, and you still get to watch it. And there's yes, ads. I would. It's just like watching it on TV. Yeah, like you can watch your, you have access to them. That's why I'd be okay with that. It's I watch Hulu. We've talked about this before. I watch shows on Hulu, but it just always does bug you that you're paying for the ads. Yeah, and the upgraded, yeah, and even with these upgraded versions, it's like really like I'm already paying for it, and I have to pay this much more just not to get ads. Yeah, like two bucks more, really. And it's like, is it worth it? I don't know. I can't decide. And we're broke still, so it's like, well, we're, we're still going to get the yeah, ad-supported you have, ones. Yeah, 15 different streaming services, and then if you pay for the the no-ad version of all of them, then you're fucking going broke. Yeah. Uh, just to highlight a few things in the catalog that I came across, um, a bunch of movies as well. Obviously, they have uh, first access to any universal-made movie, and then nothing stopping them from licensing other movies as well. But they have all of the Jurassic Parks, they have all the Matrix movies, all the Bourne movies, American Psycho, uh, Parks and Rec, obviously. SNL is on there as well. Older shows like Cheers and Frasier. What is Seinfeld going to be on? Because that was an NBC show. That They had signed an exclusive deal with Hulu for a long time, but I think that may have expired or they may have done that something cuts, else with it. So it'll be on here. Seinfeld could drop. I imagine in. eventually it will, I'm sure. I just don't know what those I do remember look like. It was on Hulu for a while. I, I, I don't know if that's like supposed to end soon or what. I'm, I'm sure there was an end date when they made that deal. I just don't know what it was. Um, and then there's a ton of Hitchcock movies on there as well. I don't know if they're just trying to put cock in their service as many times as Peacock, they possibly Hitchcock, can. Hitchcock, it works. But The Birds, Psycho, Vertigo, Rear Window, a bunch more are all on there. So if you have any interest in going back and watching some old suspenseful thrillers. And then the, the other thing that... that kind of made me change my tone with this service other than the catalog was the actual like app itself so if you download the app the very first thing you see is the browse feature which looks very reminiscent of quibi which i didn't care for that so Mm -hmm. much um sorry that was the featured section if you go to browse that's just what you expect your standard like ui for any streaming service but then they have this feature called channels which is something that it's honestly like a better implementation of a feature that I thought Netflix should have added a long time ago for shows like The Office, which is just like a shuffle feature. So if you're not actively working your way through The Office, if it's your 12th time through and you just want to watch episodes, you're either just falling asleep or you just want something in the background and you just want some random episodes as if you were turning on Comedy Central and you're just going to get whatever episode they give you. I like that. I really like that. Because like when you're watching, I watch The Office a lot now and, and I know what's coming next and I'm like, ah. I just know what's happening. I, if you give me like a skip a shuffle, round, I'd be like yeah, more excited nice. about the episode that randomly appears. So that's, in, in my understanding, and I didn't look into it too deeply, that's my understanding of what channels is. There is a The Office channel, and if you just click on it, it's just playing whatever episode of The Office it's playing. There's, that's a good idea. There's SNL. There's vintage SNL. There's obviously a bunch of different news channels. I saw a poker channel. Just clicked on that. They were showing some Even just to World have the Series option, of Poker games. Like you could still watch The Office in... In whatever order you, order want you to, wanted. Yeah, but if you want to just have random episodes. I think it's perfect for back like I mean that's what the office is. I've seen every episode of the office a dozen times so if I'm watching it it's in the background it's typically not something I'm engaged in watching so to me like I said it was just a better implementation of an idea that I had forever ago I'm pretty in on this and I was pretty interested in it so. especially while it remains free I know Bob's gonna yeah, hop no, on I'm that. actually pretty interested and in if this. they bring Seinfeld to it Seinfeld's like the ultimate random yeah. give me a random episode that'll get me in there yeah I've never seen two sequential episodes of Seinfeld <laughs> ever in my life 
Um, but yeah, I think that's it for NBC Peacock TV right now. We'll keep our eye on it. Like I said, I'm very interested in the, in the channel's future. I think that's something that I could honestly see myself going back to this app for even in the near future. So It's already beaten Quibi in my eyes. Oh yeah, 100%. No question about that. Um, so let's move on to the more Buffalo-centric portion of the podcast. If for some reason you're unaware and you don't personally know us, we live and record this podcast in the greater Buffalo area. We've all lived in the Buffalo area for our entire lives. And a movie came across recently on Hulu that I had actually heard about a while ago called Buffaloed. And we'll get into our review of that. But it made me curious, it made me do a little research into different movies that were both shot in Buffalo or set in Buffalo. Because I, I couldn't come up with too many off the top of my head. And even doing research, I was pretty unimpressed with the lists that turned up. Um, but we can just start with movies that I came across that uh, were shot in Buffalo. And I don't know if we have anything to discuss about these movies in particular. If we've seen them, we can do that. But the first one that I saw was Going in Style, which is a 2017 movie directed by Zach Braff. And that's all the information on it that I have. Yeah, the one with uh, Morgan Freeman, Michael Caine, Alan Arkin, where they are old as shit and rob a bank. 30 years ago? <laughs> all star cast it really is in 2017 not quite it's, sure about it's that three one. guys who haven't aged in 30 years so i don't know how much it actually would be a different movie that's got to be all of their worst movie <laughs> i would assume right without watching it and without seeing all of their movies i can confirm that um the biggest movie that i came across uh, at least in name was the natural the 1984 movie that has robert redford robert duvall glenn close uh, this was one that my dad ensured that I had on this list. Not one I've ever seen before, but at least I had heard of this one. Yeah, shout out to Gary for bringing this one to Jeremy's attention. This is like a huge cast. I feel like we should have all seen this movie, but I didn't I know it was in Buffalo. I if I would have known it was in Buffalo, I feel like I would have watched it already, but I, I'm just finding this out. And uh, this is also, we'll get to it eventually, but this is also a movie set in Buffalo, at least according to my research. Again, having not seen it. Yep. Wow. See, another reason why to watch it. Wow, this is impressive. And now, an even better movie coming up, right, Jerry, from your list? Oh, absolutely. Uh, everyone's favorite sequel, Sharknado 2, <laughs> the second one. Have you guys seen any of the Sharknado movies? I'm uh, never sober. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I've watched a half hour of all of them at just random points. Yeah, I, I've never seen any. Yeah, exactly. I know they're supposed points. to be jokes, but it's just the, it's too terrible. I've been pretty drunk watching them, though. <laughs> I know that much. I think I've seen the first one, but I couldn't tell you anything about it other than that there's sharks in a tornado. Yeah, I think everyone That's knows exactly that. how they pitched the movie, too. <laughs> yep. The guy just walked in, slapped his dick on the table, and he's like, guess what? Sharks in a tornado. Sold. Give me, Take my money. <laughs> Sometimes when you have a perfect idea, you don't need that many words to explain it. Uh, the next movie, which is not a sequel is it the third in the franchise it's I the first it's the fourth <laughs> the first purge i've never seen any of the purge movies i saw the first one not the first purge but <laughs> the first purge movie purge movies aren't bad the purge movies are like kind of like all modern horror movies where the first one comes out and you're like oh that wasn't that bad and then they make 50 sequels and, and they make they it suck. shitty yeah this movie sucks like i've it, actually seen it the first it's really bad the very yeah. first movie like it was a good idea and i thought it was an all right movie and then yeah, I never watched the that second one. That happens with all mo like modern horror movies. I feel like first one's good. Then they ruin it. They milk it too much, and they just suck. This one was bad. Everyone's second favorite sequel, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Out of the Shadows. Th so do you remember when they made those I remember they were... somewhat recent Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle yeah. movies oh. where they looked terrifying? Yeah. I remember them shutting down the thruway <laughs> to, film the fucking, to film this shit. I was pissed off about that. Why did we know more about this movie than we did like all the other ones on here? Don't know. This I, was like in the news like, it big was. time. Well, because they shut down the... You couldn't go anywhere. I didn't see either of these movies. Supposedly, this one is better than the first of these two Ninja Turtle movies. Tad Castle is one of the Ninja Turtles, so I've always wanted to see it for <laughs> that reason. But no, I haven't, I haven't checked this out. Uh, the next movie on my list is definitely one that we can speak to. This is a Lifetime movie, so if you're listening at home, you probably haven't heard of this one, but this is called Sleeping With My Student. Bob, why is this one so near and dear to our hearts? This one is pretty special for us because we actually have a good friend that was in this movie. Starred in the movie. Starred. He was a leading role. He had a combined about 19 seconds of screen time. <laughs> But yeah, no lines. But no, no lines. He really carried the scene. Yeah, 
as someone who didn't watch this movie but only watched that scene, I have to say, he is a star. He did great back wor- background work. They do say he was an Oscar snub. <laughs> <laughs> the way he sipped that coffee was unparalleled. But this movie, probably one of the wildest movies ever. This would also be a very good one to watch if you were drunk. If you did, if you did a double feature, Sharknado 2, and Sleeping With My Student, you're in for a good time. Aren't they time. showing that at the drive-in? Yeah, then back to back, yeah. Uh, if you have any Steve int- is actually going to be there, signing autographs. <laughs> if you have any interest in Sleeping With My Student, Bob and I actually watched this movie with our friend Steve, who's the one who starred in it, and cut down a... A 30 35 minute video that's on my youtube channel so not trying to promote my stuff too much but if you're interested in, in what that movie has to do or don't you do, watch the movie just watch the youtube no, video. Exactly. you get yeah. everything you need out of it um so this one would have come out earlier this year however it got postponed due to coronavirus a quiet place too i think we all remember when this one was filming since it was just yeah that one was actually late 2018 like, early yeah, 2019 that long ago. and it's one of the places they were filming is very close to where we all reside, so we almost didn't we almost try to go and watch the filming. Do right, you guys want to hear a, a quick embarrassing story? Mm, let's hear it. So they shut down uh, a major bridge, the Grand Island Bridge, which is a, a decent bike ride away. But and they were they were doing this overnight. I think it was like early in the morning or like late night to early morning, and it was Saturday night but the way that they phrased it in the newspaper it was like sunday 2 a.m to 6 a.m or something like that however it was phrased it confused me because i woke up very early on (laughs) monday morning (laughs) oh no (laughs) to try to bike by down towards that bridge and get a view of it and thankfully my mom stopped me on the way out wondering why i was up so early oh man i wish she would have been asleep. you asked me to go with you too and i just said no yeah that sounds <laughs> i'm about not right. getting up that fucking early and thank god what so, time did you wake, early, uh, wake up it wasn't like stupid early but it was like 6 like, a.m wow to go i'm i'm a little annoyed your mom caught that'd you. been great if you just showed up at the bridge and was like what the you, fuck and he gets hit by a car <laughs> <laughs> yep she's like uh that was yesterday and i was like <laughs> Huh. I'm gonna go back to bed then. <laughs> so yeah, that was that was my story of a quiet place too. That's that movie was pretty exciting though because the first movie like we talked about the purge, like the first one was like such a good movie. Or not well that one wasn't, but like yeah. the first A Quiet Place was a good movie, I thought. But this is gonna be good, you can tell. Yeah, I you hope. I just you know they're in the I right hands. I don't see them letting it down. I th- I think that this this is gonna be good. I agree. I think it with like the people in charge, they're gonna make it a good movie. But like that's why it makes me more excited because it's like it should be a popular movie once it comes out, and it's yeah. obviously from Buffalo. Not that people from not from Buffalo will know that, but I'm nice I'm that we most know. aware of a lot of the scenes in this movie just because of they filmed most of it here. Like they shut yeah. down a lot of places to film it. Like yeah. it was it wasn't like I, I mean I can't speak to this because I don't really know. But a lot of these other movies on the list, I'm assuming they they do like a couple scenes in yeah. Buffalo. But Th- like this a- list. Just for clarification, I tried to pick movies where their primary shooting location was Buffalo. There's a lot of other okay. movies that take make That's some like shots in scene. Buffalo. As far as I understand, the majority of filming was done in Buffalo for these movies. Maybe I'm just like more aware because Quiet Place was, I mean, a few years ago when they were filming it. But uh, last year. Yeah, last yeah, and like that's just I think I'm, I'm more hip to what's going on because I mean it's all over the news every time they when they were filming stuff. But yeah, that's that's a, that's a must see when it eventually comes yeah. out. Yeah, I'm excited for that one. Um, the final one here is actually one that was in production. I'm pretty sure it got put on hiatus, if I'm not mistaken. Mistaken. It's Nightmare Alley, which is Guillermo del Toro's next film. With it, I forgot about this cast. This is unbelievable. An unbelievable. I, just, real I just cast. knew Bradley Cooper. Can't believe all these people are in Buffalo. Bradley Cooper, Rooney Mara, Willem Dafoe, Kate Blanchett, Ron Perlman, and I'm sure there's others, but these were just the first ones that came up. Bob was basically on this set. When I was when I was working before we got sent home for the quarantine, my office is literally like five hundred feet from where they were filming. It's right in downtown Buffalo. They had the entire like Niagara Square blocked off and you couldn't get there. But a lot of people were on their lunch break were like trying to walk over and trying to like get on set and like you couldn't you couldn't get. There. I remember you snapped a picture, to, probably to a bunch of people, but of Bradley Cooper and my response was "Get him for the pod." And yeah. we're still waiting <laughs> for that response. But yeah. Brad, Brad, I know you, you're you listen every week. You're one of the eleven. Um, just just text me, man. You can come on. Don't worry. 
Uh, I'm definitely excited to see that one. Obviously, it's going to be a while before. I thought that one was mostly filmed in Toronto, though. Was that one actually? Uh, this isn't going to come out forever, I, right? To be fair, I didn't actually look into this And this, this isn't one. even done filming. We just right. knew that it was... Even before the quarantine. I remember for this one, they wanted a bunch of snow, and they came here during winter. They had a, it didn't snow at yeah. all, the so they had to like, bring in snow. Ever. And then, like, the next day, it snowed a shitload. There was, like, a blizzard the day after yeah, they left. Yeah, it was. Uh, for movies that are set in Buffalo, an even shorter list, obviously we mentioned The Natural already. Another movie I came across called Henry's Crime, which came out in 2010, starring Keanu Reeves. The only reason this even made my list was just because Keanu Reeves was in it, but I don't know if that meant I that anyone like had heard of it. I feel like I remember him... No, no, he wasn't even here because it wasn't shot in Buffalo. Weird that it was shot in a different place than set in Buffalo. It's been my experience looking into these movies that most movies that take place in, in Buffalo, Buffalo are shot in Toronto. <laughs> What's the appeal of making a movie set in Buffalo if you don't film it here? Well, clearly there is no appeal in making a movie set in Buffalo because there's only two more movies on this list and one of them only starts in Buffalo. I feel like, I before you get to the last two movies, I feel like... Okay, so we have A Quiet Place 2 that they just filmed. Nightmare Alley they just filmed. Those are two big movies. Those aren't bullshit, like, whatever, straight-to-DVD movies. Do you think Buffalo, New York is going to eventually become the new Hollywood? No. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, my, think my about short it. Okay, think about, about it. think about this. Okay, say say even okay, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles as an example. Say they wanted to shut down the four hundred five in Los Angeles. You can't do that to film a movie. Buffalo, they do that and we'll they're like, hell you, yeah, we'll pay you to do it. We'll pay you to come here. Same with Nightmare Alley. That's they, exactly why movies don't film those scenes in Los Angeles. I know, but like maybe people are going to start to realize like maybe Guillermo del Toro and John Krasinski are going to talk. They're like, hey man, you ever? Yeah, you filmed in Buffalo, right? Yeah, dude, they shut down the whole fucking city for me. Cost why me ten don't bucks. We move there. Yeah, that's what they're. Why don't we say. film all our movies there? Because we can film whenever we want. They shut down the whole city. They pay us to be there. I wouldn't be surprised if there was a higher trend of movies being shot in Buffalo. To say that Buffalo is going to become the next Hollywood. <laughs> you heard Hollywood. it here first. <laughs> Big movie boys exclusive hot take: Buffalo, New York, the new Hollywood. California. I'll give it this, though. Buffalo's at least the Hollywood of Western New York. Okay. I can't argue that one. <laughs> Not of old New York, because there's New York City, but... Uh, the final two movies set in Buffalo. Arguably the quintessential Buffalo movie. Bruce Almighty. I, I think that's without a doubt the quintessential Buffalo movie. I mean, it took a Buffalonian becoming God for the Buffalo Sabres to win the Stanley Cup. What year did this movie come out still hasn't happened yeah i want to say this came out in like 2003 i was gonna say 03 but i don't know for sure yeah the the sabers aren't very good now and <laughs> they're never they need it god. almost makes it better <laughs> that they suck i honestly think god needs to become a sabers fan for them to win and that's not happening anytime soon it is the quintessential buffalo movie though if you had uh, the, off the top of your head uh, uh bruce almighty is 2003 oh good i memory. had i had uh the stat department check that for me um, this is definitely the quintessential Buffalo movie. It the Buffalo Sabers are prominently featured in it. It takes place in Buffalo. Like, like how often they have Niagara Falls? They have a lot of Buffalo landmarks in it. But like, if you had to name off the top of your head, what's the first movie? Like, say a movie that took place in Buffalo. What is it? Are you saying anything besides Bruce? Wait, Almighty? give me a second. You're not Henry's Crime. You didn't even know what Henry's <laughs> Crime was <laughs> until two minutes ago. No, nah, Bruce Almighty was the only one going into it that I was able to pull from memory but you know what number two is it's the next one on our list the second quintessential even, i've seen movie. this movie probably like three or four times You've i did seen not Evan almighty three or four yeah, times it used to be on fx a lot i think <laughs> okay that's true yeah <laughs> but i don't think i knew that it started in buffalo i've seen this movie a couple times myself i have almost no memory of it but i think it starts in because it starts in the same news yeah department. i guess yeah. i forgot that he was in bruce almighty i guess yeah he was the news guy who does yeah that took his job um, but yeah, I'm pretty sure it starts in Buffalo before he moves out to the to Washington. country or whatever. Oh, is it Washington? Because he's a congressman. Ben's seen this movie three times. Do you wanna, <laughs> three do you wanna three times this week. <laughs> I realize you had a photographic memory of this movie. But. Yeah, John Goodman's in it too. What do you think the next one is? I heard they're filming a new one. Jason Almighty in Buffalo. I actually heard it was Mark <laughs> Almighty. And they're <laughs> switching it to Boston. <laughs> Mark Almighty. <laughs> And, Mor and, and uh, Morgan Freeman's not in it. Mark Wahlberg is the main character, and he also no. Mor God. Morgan Freeman's in it at the beginning, and he legit retires and give it to, gives give it to, to Mark, Mark Wahlberg. Wahlberg. All right. Well, I think that's gonna do it for. I mean, that those are the, my list. That's. All, I mean, there are other movies, but I mean, short and shitty. Yeah, it, it was a very unimpressive list. Honestly, I'm surprised you got four. 
That was a pretty good list to me. Yeah. Um, but we can talk about one more movie that is set in Buffalo. That movie is called Buffaloed. It premiered at the Tribeca Film Festival in April of last year. It says it had a theatrical release on Valentine's Day of this year. It must have been pretty limited, and I assume also cut short by coronavirus. You would have thought they would have advertised this in Buffalo. But never I heard of it. Never heard of it. Didn't even think to go to a movie theater to go see this. This movie actually came across when I was researching another movie, and I wish I could remember like the trail that led me to this movie, but I came across this movie at some point last year on IMDb. And I was like, okay, interesting idea. Maybe I'll see it at some point, but yeah, I completely forgot about it again until I just saw it on Hulu a few days ago. Uh, anyway, this movie is directed by Tanya Wexler, who has a few other featured directorial credits, but nothing that I had ever heard of before. This movie is written by Brian Saka, who has more acting credits. He plays Sale in this movie, who's a character we might talk about later. He also plays Robbie Feinberg in The Wolf of Wall Street, who must be a fairly minor character because I looked at so many pictures that supposedly have this guy's character in it, but none of them looked like the picture of Brian Saka, so I still He's am not director? quite sure. He's an actor. No, but of this, of Buffalo? He's the writer. He's the writer, oh, the writer? of this movie. That makes sense. Later, we'll talk about it. So, But he was technically an actor in the best picture. I think he was one of the guys the best that... movie of the 2010s. That's true. I yeah. think he was one of the guys that Leo, like, um, convinces to join early on. He might, I, he might I have a line or something. Well, but. Yeah. Um, for writing credits, it's mostly award shows in the form of the MTV Movie, Teen Choice, and 38th Annual People's Choice Awards. Wait, what? What do you mean? This won something? That those are his writing credits. He's a writer for award shows primarily. Oh, I what thought you meant. Fuck? I thought you meant this won an award, a People's Choice Award. I'm like, nope. what the fuck? He How do you wrote write for an award show. I think you write those little well, the quirks. presenters. Yeah, say the so. presenters. Oh, they don't write those. That's interesting. I never even like thought that that would be a job. Yeah. Now you're gonna apply. Yeah, I can do it. Uh, and if the last name Saka sounds familiar at all, maybe you're familiar with his brother Chris Saka who's a billionaire tech investor and featured on a few episodes of Shark Tank. And he's related to long-lost ancestor of soccer from Air, Airbender, last Airbender. Yes, that's correct. They do hail from the Southern Water Tribe. Uh, this movie stars Zoe Dutch. Deutsch. Deutsch. Looked it up. You, I, I swear to Christ. Hand to God. I believe up. you. When I said Deutsch. it, I, I forgot there was an E in it. Let me try that again. This movie stars Zoe Deutsch, Jai Courtney, and Judy Greer. Interesting cast. Judy Greer seems a little out of place, if I'm being honest. Who the fuck is Judy Greer? The only one you've seen before this. <laughs> That's her name? Yes. I never knew that was her name. She was, To me, she's just that person who I've seen before. Huh? Surprisingly, that's not her legal name. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I don't know. I think we'll remain fairly spoiler-free. I don't think that our discussion of this movie is going to hinge too much on the plot itself. It is a comedy, so... Is not it? That, technically. I, I didn't really laugh. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't laugh either. I mean, if you ask me, I might not say so, but according to Hulu's classification. Um, so I, I think we'll remain pretty spoiler-free for the most part. If we do spoil anything, we'll keep it towards the, the latter half here. But, Ben, why don't you let the people know just a, a brief synopsis of the movie Buffalo, what we're going to be discussing. Yeah, so Zoe Deutsch... Uh, hates Buffalo, wants to get out, doesn't really know how to do that, thinks she needs money to get to Harvard to get out. Real then she starts scamming a bunch of people, goes to jail, needs to get money, becomes a debt collector, and that's really where this kind of takes off. She becomes a debt collector, and she's not playing by the rules. Don't really know what else to say. Besides all hell that, ensues. Yeah, all hell ensues. She just becomes like an asshole person and just kind of ruins other people's lives, and then tries to just make up for it that's really it the i think the big conflict comes into place when she does start her, her debt collecting journey she starts by working for jai courtney who runs this debt collection firm whatever you want to call it she breaks off to do her own thing but there's this big like territorial dispute in the debt collecting world apparently so that's the major conflict is between her and jai courtney who are battling because of this competing debt collectors they basically just try to get each other, like, arrested or killed. Yeah. So I actually have, like, um, not a connection to this movie, but a little bit more of an insight. 
because not only do I live in Buffalo, but I actually applied to work at a debt collection agency and was hired. Wow, this is awesome. I did not know this. Yeah, this is, I never. I didn't take the job. The exact reason I didn't take the job is because the guy that interviewed me, the guy that ran it, was like... Jai Courtney. Basically him. No, I'm not even kidding. It was like the skeeviest <laughs> fucking dude I've ever met in my life, and I've never more, like... Just, dude, actually, like... felt, like, like, creeped out? No, yeah, I'm very creeped out. I did not take it because it was just, like, everybody that was in there was, like, a fucking convict. And we're the type of people, like, out of college, take the first job. Wow. Yeah, that was basically what I was looking at. But the way, like, even the... Even Jai Courtney's debt collection agency that you see in the movie, the setting of it, while it's, like, an old, like, beaten up, like, old warehouse that they, like, repurposed, that's where my interview was. The way the offices were set up, where it's a bunch of shitty tables and a bunch of, like, people five feet from each other that's exactly what it looked like in there the guy that interviewed me the guy that was the owner was the skeeviest fucking person in the world i'm kind of more impressed with this movie now that it's like that. no they did capture like that side of society and that profession very well from the limited exposure i had to it they definitely because like i don't know dude i almost feel like the more i had my interview was like the place that they fucking shot (laughs) it like i was like that looks familiar as fuck and like even on the inside it looks just like that so like they did do a good job there now whether a debt collection agency has territorial disputes with other debt collection agencies and it runs like the like a fucking mafia, <laughs> I don't know about that because that's almost how it is in this movie, right? Doesn't, doesn't the debt collectors feel like they're in the mafia? Yeah, Definitely. and you feel like you would hear more about this shit if it was actually going on, yeah. but you never hear about this. So I think the biggest takeaway from this movie, for me at least, and I imagine for you guys as well, being Buffalo natives, is just how relentless they are. Too much with buffalo it references off so early how just they're they're eating wings for dinner like acting like they eat wings every night for dinner. nobody eats wings every night you at most you have it like once a week i feel yeah, like and even then you have a problem <laughs> yeah it's like oh shit wings are like you're trying to die early in life if you eat that that often dude it lost all credibility for me when they talk about the duff's anchor bar dispute because any true buffalonian right. knows that both those, those are tourist suck. places well, yeah. I, I like Duff's, but I hate Anchor Bar. But both, but you can get better wings. No, but yeah, th- yeah, just more local places. Those are just yeah. like the ones no, that everyone knows about. No Buffalo native points to either of those places as their favorite. As wings. their place, I, yeah. I have a third barrier of entry into this movie. Um, I've also been arrested and been in front of a judge, and he was not eating wings. That part pissed me off more than I wrote it down. I was it's like, supposed to be a comedy, but like, was that funny? No. I go ten minutes in, and they already have the judge eating wings during a case. Like, get the fuck out of here. Unnecessary. That pissed me off so much. Yeah, it's a comedy, but it's not an over-the-top comedy like that scene makes you want, make tries to make you think it is. Like, if, that's if the only scene where it's like that absurd. If there's anybody listening that isn't from the Greater Buffalo area, which I would be fucking <laughs> flabbergasted. Um, it's <laughs> the judges, thank, you, thank you for listening. The ju- yeah, one, thank you for listening. Holy shit! Um, <laughs> but no, judges here do not eat chicken wings while they're coming to their verdict. And that that anchor bar versus Duff's debate comes up multiple times, where like people question each like other three or four times in the movie. People question other like native Buffalonians. They're like anchor bar or Duff's, like trying to figure out if they're like a true Buffalo native. I'm like, well, first of all, no one would point to either of those as their nope. favorite wings. Second of all. You blindfold yourself in the middle of Buffalo, walk in any direction. Wherever you end up has better wings than either of those two places. Mm. And it's just people don't um, talk like that. To, like, all the friends I've ever made, I've never once ran into someone and been like, what fucking wings do you like? No. If they don't agree, we're not friends. Yeah, it's not like <laughs> something you could come to blows over. The way they make it seem yeah. like in this movie. Like, you don't like the same wings as me? Well, fuck you, dude. And another thing that bothered me, yes... The Bills are way more important than the Sabres. They don't even fucking mention the Sabres, which is a huge fucking part of our local culture. The one part in the movie that I did pop for was early on. It was literally like the first five minutes. Pop for? Because they said pop. I didn't didn't even I do like that. We'll come back to that. Um, No, but like when they, they, there was like two characters that was Judy Greer was saying goodbye to somebody like, go Bills. And they're like, go Bills. That is the truest thing that you can... People yeah. do that all the time here. That was, that's a, that's a that greeting. One, that actually is true. That's a goodbye. That's a like, hell yeah, I'm excited. That's like a fuck that's I'm like pissed That's like an off. aloha in Buffalo. Yeah, <laughs> go Bills is like a universal saying. That is the Buffaloha for sure. <laughs> fuck you, Jer. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that was the only like Buffalo reference that I like cracked a smile at, I think. Because I do think the purpose of these Buffalo references are to serve as jokes. I think that's what they are. I agree, but it's... And maybe we'll touch on it more later, but it just felt like 
they made this movie for people in Buffalo because if you're not in Buffalo, you're like, huh? What are these references? Do people- and then if you're in Buffalo, you're like, wait, that's not right. You just get sick of it. So I don't know who this movie was made for. You just explained that absolutely perfectly because you're right. Like, if you're not from Buffalo, you don't know these. Like, I, I- They shot out, like, Lockport and Lackawanna. It's like, wait, what? They're talking about drinking Jennies all the time. Yeah, like, I like knows- that reference. I thought yeah. the Jenny reference was funny. Nobody from outside Rochester or Buffalo has any idea what Genesee <laughs> is. Yeah. Like... <laughs> But it just it didn't it didn't make sense to me because if you're trying to make Buffalo a, like approachable to all people, this just wasn't the way to do it. There, there's a way. It's like this whole movie is like an inside joke that eliminates ninety eight percent of the country from understanding any of the references. There's a way to I think I'm not going to take the time to do it, where you make a movie that's all about like poking fun at Buffalo, but you make it. Uh, like comprehensible to an outside audience. Yeah, I, I think, think you could get more people to understand like Buffalo references, but they, like they're they're kind of almost too specific, but too vague for Buffalo. Like how they they shout out yeah. Nova Pizza. It's like yeah, that that's a Buffalo pizza place. But you're like, right, that is a place that serves pizza in Buffalo. Yeah, but like, it's like no that's one, a popular place that people say is good. But like, no one in like fucking Wyoming is like, oh yeah, that's right, Nova. We went there once. That's but it's confusing, right? Because like for the people in Buffalo, all it does is bring up controversy. Because everyone, if you're from Buffalo, you're like, I, like I don't fucking like that place. Yeah, yeah. I don't like that. I was like, what do you mean? Like that's not that's like, not specific enough to me. Because no we real, all go to local places. Yeah, no real Buffalonian would ever go there and then you have every like you said the 98 percent of the rest of the country that's like what the fuck are they talking about <laughs> and i think i think you're right there's it's supposed to be played as a joke like almost poking fun of buffalo but it's like a joke that only people from buffalo would understand and it's not a joke to us because it's it just, just doesn't make as, sense doesn't make any sense yeah that you're you're right yeah so ben we, we were kind of talking earlier and you said the one thing that you kind of liked was the or the thing you think they should have done more of was how they just they said pop like instead subtle of soda. references, yeah. just like that. How people from Buffalo do say pop instead of soda. I but on the pop subject, the, I thought there was two times in the movies where they're like, "I why are we here? I thought there was gonna be pop and pizza." Pop and pizza, and I that's was like, so true because that'll get my ass anywhere. <laughs> I feel like that is true. Yeah, but then they say it nineteen more times. But that's the part. Then they yeah they did overkill because there, there are no other subtle things you can really say. That they overkill people... all the Buffalo references though. Exactly. Yeah, there's there's one thing to repeat a joke for, you know, repeated humor effect or to make a callback, but I do think it's a lot of overkill in this movie. They weren't even doing, like, callback jokes, though. They just said pop and pizza, like, 20 times. I think they times. were trying to make it seem like it was, uh, like, like, by their dialogue, it was set in Buffalo, but it just ended up being... Not that we're... Overkill. Uh, not that we're, like, a beautiful city, but they make it seem like everyone's fat as shit and eats pizza and wings and has pop, like, all the fucking time. So that's a point that I, I want to bring it up bring up is uh so the very early part of the movie it shows zoe deutsch's character as a young girl giving a presentation to her mom trying to convince her to give her a thousand dollars her whole purpose in life is to it, she thinks if she makes enough money then she can get out of buffalo because she hates living in buffalo she makes a point about her dad who had died because he drank too much beer and ate too many wings and all this other stuff and i i think on one hand that you're right ben that it is maybe painting Buffalo in a bad picture. But I've also held the theory for a long time that Buffalo has embraced a culture of drinking beer and eating garbage food as a way to mask the fact that they're all trying to slowly kill themselves and leave Buffalo. That's kind of a good point, because I do drink a lot of beer and eat a lot of pizza. But you do it with a smile on your face. I do it with a smile <laughs> on my face. And I'm one of the people who do does want to leave Buffalo, but not for the reason that I do love Buffalo, and I just think this movie almost... Makes it seem like if you're from here, the only thing you have to do is drink, which, I mean, yes, that is true, but drink and eat pizza and wings. There's two types of people in this movie. There's a character like Zoe Deutsch that wants to get out because they hate it here, and then every other character loves it. is fucking super stoked on Buffalo. Like, I, I think the brother... Think that, the brother is, though. Yeah, the brother is the best character to me because he like he's just like the simple guy. doesn't need too much. He just wants to own a bar in Buffalo and just watch Bill's games and drink beer. And they don't have him be, like, fat as shit and eating wings and pizza or whatever. I just... I liked that character. There's people like that. There's people that like it here, and then there's people that hate it here, and all they talk about is leaving. I just feel like he was the most... um, What's the word? Realistic? Yeah, the most realistic character. The the only one that like I could see myself like, oh, he is from Buffalo. That's fair. Yeah. And I think that that dichotomy of viewpoints of people who either love it or beg to leave is probably true of every city. Yeah. Or every yeah, town, yeah, I but, agree there. 
Um, speaking of like the dialogue though, and just kind of generalizing people from Buffalo, have you ever said the word jagoff? No, and I'm confused. <laughs> I've never even heard it. No. They say it a lot, obviously, and then at the end they even make it a point like that's the last word on the screen, like is jag off. And I'm, I'm like, so confused by that. Could they not say like fucker? Like I, we motherfucker. Just, we say real swear words here. Yeah. We don't say jag off. That seems more like a Midwest kind of thing. Maybe because we're not from the heart of Buffalo, but that I feel like people don't talk like. Maybe that it here. is, but like I mean, if you talk more about like you mentioned the dialogue, the accents. There are pe- there's to me there's like two buffalo accents. There's the one that they that's portrayed in this movie that's basically like Canadian almost. Canada like, light. Yeah. Yeah. And then there's like a real buffalo accent which is kind of like I feel like it's got like almost like a New York City kind of twang to it mixed with like we say our A's like yeah, yeah, like yeah. But like I feel like there's different buffalo accents and the one that they try to go for in the movie definitely like there's definitely people that talk like that. Like there's definitely dudes hanging out at the Bills game they're like, "Oh yeah, give me a Jenny." Like, like that happened. <laughs> that was a good connection. There's accent. people that do that. Yeah, it's, it's basically you said Canada light, but which like, makes sense cuz we are so close to Canada, but I just feel but like, like we don't talk like that. No, I've been yeah. told from people that I've met that aren't from here that I have a buffalo accent. So like especially in Colorado, I got that a lot. Yeah, so I think the buffalo accent they portray in the movie I think there's more than one, but they're portraying the like they're literally portraying the the Jenny drinking season ticket holder since '89, actually eats wings five days a week. Like that is literally what they're trying the to. The person who does die at like 40 years old. Zoe Deutsch's dad is who they were yeah. aiming for. But those people, I've interacted with those people. I know people that are like that. I have never heard them say jag off. No one says jag off. Nobody Could, says that. What was this movie rated? Could they not say jackass? A couple, no, they say fuck like times. 50 times in it. Oh yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> yeah, it's got to be rated R. What would if we, what would you say like replaces that? Like if it was an actual, I say motherfucker the most. Like if like shut the fuck up, motherfucker. I yeah. don't say shut the fuck up, jag off. Yeah, you goddamn jag off. <laughs> like like nobody talks like that. That seems like a more Midwest thing. I it don't know does where they, they it, almost grouped those in. Like, yeah, I don't I don't know, I don't know if it was a, an older Buffalo thing. So the Brian Sokka, the writer, they are him and his brother and family. I guess are. Buffalo natives are from Lockport. I was just about to ask that. Why the fuck would you make a movie like this if you weren't like he had to be from here, right? But I don't know how long ago they left or like how how old they are. I'm guessing they're in their forties maybe, but But don't you think if yeah, they must have left like twenty maybe years ago a, at least. It is an older don't reference. you think if we not we couldn't write this movie, but say no. like he asked us to make changes, we'd be like, Well, we don't say jag off. Like just change that, that to that's motherfucker. Simple. Consult somebody that lives in Buffalo and they would say that right away. And they'd probably take off the as much emphasis they have on Jenny and they'd probably switch it to like Blue I don't know they'd probably, switch, they'd probably switch it to Labat I don't know <laughs> that but, makes way more sense to me and just the fact that like everything in this movie they could have like consulted they should have reached out to friends they used dude, to have in ask Buffalo one fucking guy from like, Buffalo if you aren't making this movie for mainstream, because you really aren't this movie's not for the mainstream if you're doing this many Buffalo references, references. Yeah. so like make more accurate depictions Exactly. So I'm saying it fails for both camps, the people in Buffalo and the people outside of Buffalo. Well, I mean, obviously, like, all the things we don't like. Okay, so can we agree on this, that all the things you don't like about the movie are all the Buffalo references? I was going to say, we should probably talk about the movie <laughs> in its other aspects as well. Because I, think that I, I, I do what agree. pisses I me off. Yeah. I don't think it's... At, when I first started watching it, because they, they, they fucking hit you over the, the first head. first 15 minutes is they just Buffalo references. They hit you over the head with the Buffalo references. So it's like, I, was, I, I texted you guys when I was watching I was like, I fucking hate this movie. <laughs> and then... It got like maybe like forty five minutes in, and I'm just like, this is not that bad. And even by the end of it, I was just like, that wasn't horrible. If you take out all the Buffalo references, I would bump it up like on a scale of one to ten, I'd bump it up like two points. I think it would have been me, an hour long movie then. That's true. Because <laughs> to me, it gets like a four or five. And I then think take I'm... out all the Buffalo references, and maybe switch the title of the movie. Yeah. And maybe it gets like a six. You could even keep the six point five title. Still whatever. Yeah, you want to get out of the Buffalo the movie. Yeah, I mean it's it's like the cherry on top of all the over the over top. the head smacking you with buffalo references. Like the, the debt collection like aspect of this movie is actually interesting. Like I would almost want like a better made movie of that like world because you take it out seems the buffalo interesting. aspects and you just add the debt collection war that they have and it's. But I think you're higher on this movie. Like that's not bad, but the buffalo just gets to me. I think I put this movie at like a two. I fucking hated it. I just couldn't get past it. Okay, I might have been the most positive then between all of you guys because yes i agree the buffalo references are the worst part but the movie itself i thought was pretty good 
I'm not saying you need to rush, can't you know, stop what you're doing and go watch it, but I do think it's worth watching. I did. I can agree. With if you're from right. Buffalo, I think it's worth watching just to like. I would maybe say disagree even, with us. I would almost love to have somebody watch it that isn't from Buffalo if and hear what they have to say about yeah. it. Yeah. Because they might not get, like I said, like the thing I don't like about the movie, and we all said it, the thing we don't like about the movie is the Buffalo references, and that only bothers us because. It's, Maybe we're reading into it too much. You know what I mean? Like, so say you weren't from Buffalo and you watched this movie. Those references aren't references to you. They're just now. I'm trying to dialogue. think of movies that aren't based in like Los Angeles or New York, where like, do they just like do they hardcore? Get that? Do yeah. they just hardcore mention like local things that we just don't even give a shit about? Yeah, I don't know. That's that's interesting. I feel like those places are so big that no, I I mean like smaller besides Los Angeles and New York because like I feel like every movie's based there. So oh, like the smaller town movies, mid tier city like Buffalo. Yeah, like do they like read into those things way too much, and we just are just not even paying attention. To is, it. There, is there, is there a movie in Cleveland where they just hammer home Cleveland references for the entire? Thing? I'm thinking the first one I thought was Philadelphia, and I was thinking like the Rocky series because there's a lot of Philadelphia references in there and. They don't take me out of the movie, but I was just thinking they probably do for somebody from Philadelphia. I like, always wonder that. That's yeah, that's actually interesting. Because the Rock, I mean, that's, I think they idolize that movie. I think I think it's different. They have yeah, statues because... of Rocky, not <laughs> Sylvester Stallone, of Rocky yeah. I th- in I th- Philadelphia. I think you're right. It is different for a movie like that. That I mean, because it, it's a huge movie. It literally won, Rocky won one Best Picture. <laughs> I'm not saying it won't happen, but I don't see a Zoe Deutsch statue going up in uh, Buffalo. Not currently, no. She's not bad in the movie, though. She's not bad. Maybe a Jai Courtney statue will go up. Yeah. I don't think she's bad either. There's a couple Put up her mo- brother. There's a yeah. couple moments where I think she goes like way over the top, but I'm going to put that more as like a, a, dire- comedy. a director fault. No, than, yeah, I, than I agree. Hers. She's not that funny. But <laughs> the stuff she does isn't not entertaining. I didn't know does this was sense? supposed to be a comedy. No, but does that – exactly. Like I didn't laugh in it, but I think it's supposed to be a comedy. But the things she does that are supposed to be – comedic didn't make me laugh but i was still kind of entertained by her like does that like i don't know i think that makes sense like i wasn't i mean i watched this movie over like three days so and i'm the most 90 minutes long what the hell did you do you did the quibi model for i did yeah i did did like 20 minutes the first day 20 minutes the next and then an hour uh this morning but you really didn't like it i yeah but it wasn't like her started watching it before either of us and stopped finished it (laughs) after both yes fact i think it was just maybe it's the buffalo references that got me out of it but once I got into the debt collection side, it was good. But she wasn't the problem. It was just more so like the writing, just the fact that they needed that many references. I do The debt collecting portions of the movie, I think Brian Saka was very inspired by his time on Wolf of Wall Street. I there's, definitely picked up some Wolf yeah. of Wall Street there's vibes. There's almost a copy and paste like scene from Wolf of Wall Street. There's a part in the movie where they are literally, when Zoe Deutsch decides to start her own debt collection agency like from the ground up and she starts recruiting like yes. oddball characters that are good for... Whatever she's looking for, you they know. They also break the fourth wall a couple times to yeah. explain what's going There's on. There's a lot of now that yeah, he literally tried to make a Buffalo version of the Wolf of Wall Street. There, there is the scenes where she's doing her debt collection startup are almost copy and paste from the Wolf of Wall Street. Uh, and just a final note on the debt collecting aspect itself. This is something that actually came up on Twitter recently as well. I was aware of it, but not aware on how it all worked the whole purchasing debt sort of thing, how you could buy it. You can purchase debt for pennies on the dollar. And people were saying, why don't billionaires just buy people's debt for pennies on the dollar and eliminate it? Seeing how it actually works and how this movie explains how it all actually plays out, why doesn't someone do that? I mean, obviously obviously it's a charitable move. You get nothing yourself if you just spend... Rich people don't care about poor people? Well, yeah, I mean, that is the real answer, but... Yeah, that is the only answer, actually. Rich people don't care about poor people. Do you think they do a good job of explaining how that works? I think they do. I think I know more about debt collection than I... I, Than when you went in, right? Yes, I did not know anything about it. I think that's the best takeaway from this movie. It's weird, because I didn't know anything about it, and I was hired at a debt collection agency. (laughs) And (laughs) You would have been a terrible... uh, Oh, yeah. Because you would have felt bad for these people. I just feel like these people are the worst... You need to hire assholes. Well, yeah, like like in the movie. They they have have that hooker that works for her. They have... Oh, yeah, they have the person from prison. The lady that beat people up in jail. The the Catholic guy who walks around trying to convince people to to give him money for Jesus. The Asian lady who runs the nail salon. Yeah, like it's not... It's it's an oddball cast, and a lot of them have like a record, and that's from my time walking through the office at the <laughs> debt collection agency. That's Spot on. that's basically what it is. Yes. So I this might I don't think this really gives anything away, but just the fact that her boyfriend 
is like prosecuting her case at one point would never happen. It made me pissed off. Just obviously, it, lo- it was one of the th- logistic things that just bothered me. I didn't like that. I did like him though. Graham, I think that was his name. Yeah, I like him too. He was in a movie with Lakeith Stanfield. I can't think of the name of it right now, but I know he was good in that as well. But yeah, he's one of the better parts of the movie. But like you were saying, wouldn't that be a conflict of interest if you're dating the person you're going? It just bothered me. Is he the only uh, lawyer in Buffalo? <laughs> Can we confirm I, that? I think the uh, assumption was that he's like the only one working on this that case, case or like trying to figure out this whole debt collecting mafia world or whatever i don't really know it feels like the mafia in some points in this i felt like i was watching an episode of the fucking sopranos like (laughs) it was it was a little over the top and but i believe it like i think it is what actually happens like to the extreme i think they do try to like collect debt from people like multiple times yeah that's one of the things that happens throughout the movie is these debt collectors find these skeevy fucking ways to try to make more money they'll prey on old women and collect debt from them more than once and lie do you think like that they can like take things away from you when yeah. they really can't like, just say to they make can you garnish pay. your wages and fucking like i don't know like stuff even like just that. arrest you what i've learned is never pay your debt actually okay. apparently you can just get away with doing that just yeah. never pay your debt how many, how many times in the movie does someone is a debt collector calling and someone picks up the phone and says stop calling and hangs and up just hangs and, up yeah and apparently it's portrayed as a, a, a judy rear um, Zoe Deutsch's mother has been doing this for like 20, 20 years, yeah. like with not even her debt. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, the final thing that I want to mention about this movie, which doesn't have much to do about the movie itself. Did you guys notice how small the font was for the end credits? <laughs> There's like, it, yeah. like the movie ends and it gives you like a story about like what these people did after the movie, yeah. whatever, like follow-ups on the characters. It was so goddamn small that I couldn't read it. Yeah. I, I thought about that at the moment. I was like, I feel like I have to squint. I have like twenty twenty vision. I yeah. I don't know why they made it so small. Just make that shit black. And it wasn't like a ton of information. Just make it yeah. bigger. I think yeah. it was just like, it wasn't more like debt collecting information or whatever. Yeah, it wasn't about the yeah, characters. Yeah. Yeah. I just saw Jagoff. Yeah, Jagoff at the end. Yeah. I was I was like struggling to read it. It was so small. I don't know why that really bothered me, but No, but it's you're allowed to be bothered. What what do you say though about this movie, like for for all the listeners at home, all all twelve of you? I'll, if you're from Buffalo, watch it. And so you can bitch about something. And if you're not from Buffalo, which you aren't, because why would you be listening? But I want to actually hear someone's opinion who isn't from Buffalo. Like I said, I think it's worth watching regardless. Like, I, again, I, I'm i not saying it's a flawless movie. I do think it has its issues, but I I still enjoyed it. Probably it sounds like more than either of you guys if did. If this movie was called Pittsburgh, <laughs> I would probably really like it. <laughs> Admittedly, the the biggest takeaway I had from this movie is that I need to watch Wolf of Wall Street again. Yeah, I, maybe, I haven't seen that one too recently. Yeah, I think you're right. Like this is just the way watered down version of Wolf of Wall Street. It's clearly a no. I don't want to say rip off, but it's clearly very influenced by Wolf of Wall Street. This guy was on the movie, got super fucking inspired by Scorsese, and was like, "I'm gonna make a Not Buffalo even version." He's probably just like, "Fuck, I should just do that." <laughs> Scorsese dropped some of his notes he had written <laughs> down, and he picked them up real quick and saved them for his own script. We we kind of touched on it earlier, though. What are you rating it? What are you rate rating it? out out of ten? I don't Big like movie boy score out of ten. I don't like putting numbers on it because oh if if I were to be objective, then it would be a lot lower. It'd be like in a four or five range. But that doesn't mean I disliked it. It just means I don't think. We'll it be was... objective, yeah. Well, you can watch a four or five movie. Yeah, I mean, you I, can I, like I, a four or five movie. That's where I'd. Trying to be objective, but yeah, I'd probably put it in the four to five range. Did you like it? Yeah. Okay. I would still recommend it. I yeah. just again, I would. There's better movies. If, you got you if got, you me got on movies the, you'd I, rather watch. You have basically the same. I I would say it's about a four or five. You take out the Buffalo references, I put it at maybe a six or six point five. That being said, I still would say I enjoyed it. I I, like, I had a lot of problems with it, but like it was an enjoyable watch because almost I could bitch about it. And when I can bitch about things. I'm happy. Yes, I agree with that. What if you make this? If you can somehow just like dive into the world of debt collection and like expand on that and just make that a bigger. If Martin movie, Scorsese did a debt collection, yeah, movie. I, I think if like a real director, like in a real writer, like had this movie, it could be a good movie. Right? I it just, could be interesting. I put the movie at a two, but that's I'm just like like Bob said, I'm just pissed off at the movie. I think, but like I like talking shit about it. Mm-hmm. But like, okay, also, did you matters- enjoy it? No, it took me three days to okay. watch it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but, like, mad respect for someone from Buffalo, like, writing a movie about Buffalo. Like, I'll never get mad at that. Shocked why this, shocked why this movie isn't more talked about 
Like, how how come we have never heard about this until... I mean, God damn it, guys. It's a movie. We are on a movie podcast. It's about Buffalo. We live in Buffalo. How the fuck have I never heard about this? Yeah, that's weird. That's not on us, though. That's on them. Like, why didn't they just fucking... Once they realized, okay, this movie's not going to make any money, just why fucking not hammer it, it. pump it in every theater here. Like, why was that not <laughs> on the marquee of every single movie theater? Exactly, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't Why know what put it on the news and say like movie set about Buffalo. Never even heard of it. Yeah. The fact that it only went to the Tribeca Film Festival and didn't go to other film festivals after that makes me think. Oh, that the Buffalo Film Festival. No, <laughs> I heard it premiered there. Uh, makes me think that there wasn't a lot of confidence behind the movie. Whoever was on the production side of it, probably. I don't know. They sold it to Hulu, or they made some sort of deal with Hulu. So clearly. They it's a solid Hulu someone did movie. If you're, if you're some kind of sociopath that <laughs> predominantly watches stuff on Hulu, this one this could be for you. Before we wrap up here, we just want to give a special shout out to our... The biggest movie boy. The biggest movie boy. The host of this podcast. Jeremy the host, Bauman, the producer. The editor. Everything. He is the only one who creates these spread... The... Me and Ben do almost <laughs> virtually no work for this. <laughs> exactly. Jeremy does everything for this podcast. If, if you're a fan of the Big Movie Boy podcast, do us a favor and tweet at Big Movie Boys. Happy belated birthday to Jeremy Bauman. His birthday is this Sunday, July 19th. Happy birthday, Jeremy. The big 2-4. Thank you, boys. Kobe here. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Thank you for the birthday shout-out as well. And remember, Buffalo, 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 Buffalo. We'll see you next week.